Thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you that it never fails. Thank you, Lord, that it is already settled. And we praise you for it right now, Lord. We thank you for the victory. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name and praise you. You are our leader. You are our God. You are our King. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that you have made all things possible. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Give the Lord a big hand clap this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, everybody uh, that's joining us on Facebook. We appreciate uh, uh, the fact that uh, he hasn't taken that away from us. Praise the Lord. Oh, okay. Well, that's for those of you who have been paying a lot of attention here lately. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Well, God is great. Amen. And uh, He is our victory. Praise the Lord. In every situation, we are overcomers. Praise God. Thank you, Tim, uh, for opening for us and doing such a great job as always. And uh, Suzanne and Jody, thank you for leading us. It was a ter tremendous songs. I'm telling you, just, if you, if you didn't get touched by that, like I think some of the preachers say, you don't, that doesn't light your fire, your wood's wet. Praise the Lord. So, Praise God, but thank the Lord. And uh, again, uh, we appreciate uh, Mike and Suzanne so much. Uh, Friday, uh, great, great time to, to, to be together. And, uh, you know, a lot of stress and anxiety and questions, and, but God has the answers to all of it. And it's just, it, there's something special about when we do come together like, that way. And uh, it, I mean, I was touched. It wasn't about any specific thing. It was just the, the, the presence of the Lord and the sense of His having authority and having control. And it just brings peace and, and uh, comfort to us. And uh, we're grateful for that in Jesus' name. And thanks again for everybody that joined on uh, Sally. I read a long list of people that were uh, joined the uh, service Friday night for the prayer meeting. And, and uh, we're happy to have them be a part of it, as well as all of you that are with us today via Facebook or live streaming, and we're just grateful to have you be a part of the service and part of what God's doing in this church, this group, this body. Amen. And that includes you. If you're out there in Facebook and, and you're a part and you associate yourselves with us, then you're a part of this church, this, this body of believers. Praise the Lord, and we, we appreciate that. Most of all, we appreciate the Lord. Amen. And just keep the focus there, and we're going to be all right. Praise the Lord. Did you hear about the, uh, Tim was talking about the zoo. There was a uh, aquatic animals that escaped down there at the zoo. Yeah, it was utter chaos. They said it was terrible. It's a real mess. Praise the Lord. And that last storm we had, we, that nine inches that uh, my back is still recovering from. Praise the Lord. Uh, Sally said that there's moose falling from the sky, and I said it's reindeer. <laughs> You know, the world that we live in now, there, there's one word that can describe most people who don't like somebody. When, you know, I'll just say it for me. There's one word that describes people who don't like me. Irrelevant. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's all about me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, praise God. It's been cloudy. This is winter in Iowa. It gets so boring and depressing day after day with no sunshine, right? You know what a day without sunshine is like? Well, you know, it's like night. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Praise, the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Okay, thank the Lord. Let's, uh, let's get to the Word of God this morning. Amen. And I appreciate, again, Tim, and the songs that we sang, everything that was being said here, shared this morning. Again, God is witnessing it uh, to me through the Word, and I'm just really pleased and uh, happy to be able to share it with you. Let's, get, let's begin with Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. Isaiah 10 and 27. Praise the Lord. And it shall come to pass in that day that the, his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Praise the Lord. 
First John chapter two, verses eighteen through twenty nine. First John two, eighteen through twenty nine. Praise the Lord. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. This is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are all literally carriers of Almighty God and of his burden-removing, yoke-destroying power. Let's look at Jer Jeremiah 2 and verse 13. I'll get a few scriptures here just to kind of set things up. But we, we are literally carriers of God's re burden-removing, yoke-destroying power. Yes. It's in us to do this. So for my people have committed two evils. They've forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So instead of going to God... A lot of people have been going to other things for their solace, for their peace, for their overcoming ability, right? And if, if these times have done nothing else, they should have at least waken us up to the fact that only God has the answers here. No matter what. I mean, we have our preferences, we have our, you know, things that we trust in and, and believe in, and this nation is certainly one of them. But we know that it has flaws. It, it, it is... It is manipulated by people yeah. and unless our confidence is in God we get manipulated we get used just like the system itself praise the Lord so he's telling us if you're going to something other than God you're going to nothing yeah. you're going to something that cannot sustain you that cannot support you that cannot keep you water is an essential thing in life right I mean you got to have water to live so if you're drawing your water from a dry well or from an empty well, you're already dead. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So look at 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. I, we, I talked about this a little bit last week, and I, it, I see how it's relevant, you know, so much more than I even thought or understood at the time. But we have also a more sure word of prophecy. There's been a lot of prophecy, and I'm not questioning what's, what's true or what isn't true. That's not my place. That's not for me to do. But for me, we have a more sure word of prophecy. I don't care what anybody else prophesies. And I, I, I appreciate the, the, the prophetic gifts. Yeah. But I'm telling you, the bottom line is, this is what's true. Yeah. People can miss it. We know they can. But they don't get struck dead anymore because of the grace of God. And I don't, I don't know, again, I'm not saying who's, who's prophesied correctly and who didn't prophesy correctly or if they're all true and, and we just haven't seen the re final result of all that or not. But all I know is there's something that is even more sure word than a prophet. Right. And that is this word. Yes. This was spoken from the mouth of God to the ears of individuals who were anointed of the Holy Ghost to write it down. Yes. Praise the Lord. And so we have a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that you take heed to this. Let's, but let's put as much attention on this as we have individuals that are just speaking. 
I'm not saying, I'm not doing away with that. I'm just saying this I know to be true. This I know. I, I have no question about it. Other people can prophesy, and I, I have to have my faith. I'll, I'll, I'll receive it because I know if it's in uh, agreement with the word, there's no reason why I can't take that and receive it, right? But the thing I do know for sure, whether they miss it or they don't, this is true. This will prevail. Amen. And so take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, and I want to read verses 7 through 15. Ver Ephesians 4, 7 through 15. Praise the Lord. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Praise the Lord. Can you go back to verse 7? Is that okay, if you would? Back to verse 7 there in Ephesians 4 and 7. He said, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That word translated grace there in the scripture refers to the anointing of God. Yeah. Actually, grace is, or grace and anointing, uh, can be used interchangeably. Remember, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. He is the anointing. He is the anointed. Praise the Lord. And so, uh, Christ is, in, in Greek, the word Christ actually translates anointed one. And so, he's referring to Jesus as the anointed Son of God. So, it can also be translated anointing when referring directly to the power that God anointed Jesus with. With anointing. Praise the Lord. So when Paul used the word Christ in Ephesians 4, 7 there, he is referring to the anointing. All right, so unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Every one of us is given anointing just like Jesus. The same as Jesus. Now having said that, we can translate the verse... Unto every one of us is given anointing according to the measure of the gift of the anointing. In other words, according to what Jesus had. So Paul understood that the actual physical body of Jesus was the residing place of God's anointing while Jesus was here and ministering on earth. Then when Jesus ascended up into heaven, that full embodiment of anointing went with him. Amen. But then God did this amazing act. He sent back his spirit to the earth. Back into men. Amen. And that's what Paul is referring to in this verse. Today, we as believers are that body of Christ. We are that body of God's anointing in the earth. Praise the Lord. Look at Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, his yoke from off thy neck, and then the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So Ephesians again, chapter 4 and verse 8.
Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. Chapter, or excuse me, verse 11 and 12. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So now when Jesus ascended into heaven, his disciples were obviously no longer connected to him physically. They couldn't see him, they couldn't touch him, they couldn't have conversation with him, right? But like I said before, God sent his spirit and suddenly these disciples could be connected to Jesus. Right? In the Spirit, by the Spirit, being born again of God's Spirit, and thereby receiving His anointing. With a divine connection in place. Now, once that happened, it wasn't long before everywhere the disciples went, new believers came, were attracted, were drawn. Wherever they went, the anointing went. At last, the plan of God had established became a reality. What God had established before the foundation of the world became fact, became reality. That word was in operation. What he spoke from the very beginning. And the church, the body of anointed ones, was joined, was connected. Ephesians 4.16 From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part that maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Hebrews 13, verses 8 and 9. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Be not carried away or carried about with divers and strange doctrines, for it's a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. So God's plan is the same today that it's always been. It's established with grace, or the tra a literal translation is God's empowerment. Praise the Lord. We have been established, the church has been established, we as individuals have been established, amen, by God's empowerment. Yes. We can do all things through Christ yes. who strengthens us. Yes. Amen. And so it doesn't matter what your career is. It doesn't matter what your vocation is. It doesn't matter retired, uh, still working. It, none of that stuff really has anything to do with it. God wants every gifting and every anointing of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, alive and active in your life. Yes. Praise the Lord. I love what Don said. Give us, give us the courage, the yes. boldness yes. to go out and wherever we find people that are questioning or who, have, who are looking for answers, we're looking for God, that we have the courage and the boldness to stand up and share the truth with them. Yes. Wherever it is, wherever we are. Praise the Lord. Look at uh, John 5, or excuse me, John 15, verse uh, 5. John 15 and verse 5. You know, uh, pressure, we know all this stuff, will turn coal over a long period of time into a diamond. So the beauty comes out under pressure. Now I don't, I, God isn't bringing the pressure, but he'll use the pressure to bring light, to bring us to our totality, to who and what we really are, what we were created to be in Christ. Because as long as things are rocking on pretty well, we don't really need it. It's only when cancer hits. It's only when uh, tragedy comes. It's only when chaos happens that we really need and realize how much we have needed God all along and how much we have needed the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be operating in our lives. Amen. And so I'm the vine, he said. And then he says, you are the branches. And he that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. All right, verses 7 and 8. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, this, you'll ask what you will and it'll be done unto you. 
Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. So think about this. The vine and the branches are connected to each other, right? They're one. It's all one thing, right? That means all the branches, all the branches, not just some of the branches, not the biggest branches, not the highest branches, all of the branches, right? Every branch have access to the sap that is in the vine. Otherwise, they couldn't exist. They wouldn't live. They would be dead, right? So the same sap that flows through the vine flows through all of the branches. This is what Jesus is trying to get across to us, or Paul is in, this, in, in his writing here, is that the same sap that flows through the vine flows through all the branches. So we have the same thing Jesus has. But there's a problem to that. See, the devil's biggest nightmare is that the church discovers this. That the church matures to the place where we're actually operating like Jesus. You see, we, he said uh, anyone who does righteous things. Now, he's not talking about sinless, you know, non-error kind of behavior. He's talking about righteousness from the perspective of the anointing, from who we are in Christ. Understanding that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? So the devil's freaking out because if we ever understand this and ever begin to really walk in it in totality, he's done. He it's over. He Amen? Ephesians 4, verses 13 through 15. And so we've all had our, uh, our teachings and, and, and being exposed to some of the supernatural, uh, either uh, just in our own lives through healings and deliverance or whatever it might be, or we've certainly been in services where it was preached and where we saw hands being laid on people and things happening and, and miraculous experiences, right? But when it happens that the body of Christ rises up and all begin to function this way, can you imagine if it's not just in our church, but it's wherever we are, at Walmart, right. at Hy-Vee, you know, at the grocery store, at wherever we are. Yep. Get and go. Quick trip. Yep. Casey's. Because there's people out there all over that I guarantee are, are laying awake at night right now wondering, what, what's going to happen? What are we going to do? How, what's going what's, what's to come of all this? Is there a God, really? Is there someone we can turn to since the government seems to not be able to function very well? You know, I mean, is there some place we can go and know that what they say is true? That what he says he will do? Praise the Lord. We henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth, that's this right here, in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Praise the Lord. See, believing, believing the gifts and the anointing of God are for a special few renders us divided and immature. I, you know, I watch Christian TV. I don't watch as much as I did at one time, only because there's so much unchristian things going on on there. But we know that in the end, the devil is going to fail. But that doesn't mean we don't have a big part to play in bringing the plan of God to pass. If we didn't have, we would not be here. He would have just taken us immediately to heaven. Right. We're here for this purpose. The same purpose that Jesus came. Right. To bring reconciliation to this world. Mark 16, verse 15 through 18. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs will follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That's everybody. That's every Christian believer. Yes. You have the same 
capacity, the same ability, the same anointing to prophesy. Yeah. All those gifts were given for us. The reason he talks about the, the ministry is so that the ministry can let you understand that that's yours. It isn't just for the person that's standing in the pulpit or that has a big ministry or that is on TV or whatever it might be. It's for every single believer. And where the church has failed, they've made it about individuals rather than about the body. Right. This is our reality. And until the church grows up, matures to the place where we're willing to do what Jesus did at the risk of being humiliated or embarrassed or laughed at or mocked or whatever, it's not going to happen until we do it. It isn't about us. The pressure's not on me. I just got to do it. I just, I just have to do it. And if I'm being led by the Holy Spirit, which we are, whether we know it or not, then I'm going to be confronted with opportunities to lay hands on the sick, to cast out devils, to prophesy. Right? And so are you. Once, once everybody, once all of us really see ourselves as God does, then we can expect every anointing and every gifting of Jesus to begin flowing in our lives, just as it did in His. Why, why did it work for Jesus? Because He believed, and He only said what His Father said, and He only did what His Father did. Praise the Lord. Every anointing and gifting of Jesus begins to flow in our lives when we see ourselves the way God sees us. When we begin to function the way God has empowered us to function. And when that happens, the church is finally going to see the real power, the real manifestation of God's glory right here in the earth. Praise the Lord. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. I just want to show you some things that are that God has dealt with me over the years and why I do some of the things I do and don't do some of the things I used to do. And I'm not talking about good behavior or bad behavior. I'm talking about the way I try to operate in, in the church service. And it's, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Praise the Lord. God didn't give the body of Christ the gifts of the Spirit for us to spend on ourselves. Praise the Lord. He gave us His Word to get our healing and our health, to deliver us, to give us financial prosperity, to give us abundance. He gave us His Word for anything and everything that we have need of. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 and 18. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given unto us, or given to us, the ministry of reconciliation. Amen? 2 Corinthians 6.1. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace or the empowerment of God in vain. Praise the Lord. So on the other hand, God gave the gifts of the Spirit to the church so that we could in turn minister to a lost, a hurting, a broke, and going to hell world. Not for us. The Word is for us. The Word is what we get healed by. The Word is how we operate. The Word is how we are blessed and, and prospered. That's how it happens for us because we're believers. It's the laying on of hands and, and, and the prophesying. That, that is for the lost. That's for the world who does not know God. Right. Who doesn't believe that there's a God. Right. Because as I said last week, you can quote the Scripture to them all day long, but they don't have the Spirit, so it doesn't come alive to them. They have to see something, an act of God, in order for them to understand that there really is a God. We can preach to them all day and all night, but unless the Spirit moves on them, they're not going to get it anyhow. So we've handed out tracts and we've knocked doors and we've confessed and we've done all that I'm talking about with other people and so forth. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that. I'm just saying your odds, the odds of actually impacting people's lives are so small when we do it that way because we're not depending on the Spirit of God. And that's the only thing that can bring anybody to Christ. 
Everybody doesn't have a grandmother praying for them. Everybody didn't have a great-grandfather or great-grandmother or somebody in their you know, genealogy that was crying out to God that let all of my family be saved, all of my genealogy, all of the heirs, all, of, all that will be born after me, yes. that they would be saved. Everybody didn't have that because they didn't have it. The one before them didn't have it, right? They were in darkness. Yeah. He intended the signs and wonders of His Spirit to be for the benefit of unbelievers. We are to live by faith. We, we, don't, we should not have to have a sign or a wonder to believe. Right. Our belief is based on faith in this Word. That's right. yes. And that's what changes things. That's what changes it for us. But we can't just go out and talk to people that are unsaved as though they were saved and, and wonder why they think we're nuts. Yeah. Or why they don't get it. Like I said last week, the Word won't help them unless the Holy Spirit is moving. The signs and the wonders were to draw lost people to the church. And we were anointed by God to minister His Word and His anointing to them. That was the plan. That was God's intention. And when I say drawn to the church, I don't mean just to come to church. That's great. And, and, and it's a great opportunity. If we can get them here, they can feel the presence of the Lord maybe from a, from a physical yeah. perspective. And they can see other believers and it gives them a hope that, hey, they, they, these people don't seem totally nuts. Maybe there's a chance that what they're talking about can be real, right? But I'm saying the way we really get them to the church is getting the church to them where they are. Because we know this. There's a lot of people who are never going to come to church. They're just not going to do it. Especially not in the, in the, in the world that we live in today. Because there isn't the influence of the church outside of the church. It isn't like it used to be when we were all young. and Yeah, right? I mean, it wasn't on the TV. It wasn't here. It wasn't there. Now you've got to go to a Christian channel if you want to know anything about the Lord. And then it may not necessarily be everything you're looking for. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Look, let's... Philippians 4.19. Every one of us in the body of Christ should have the full scope of God's anointing alive and active in our lives. It ought to be working in us. But you have to be conscious of it in order for that to happen be effective, right? I mean, you have to be aware that it's there and available. So, but my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory. How? By the anointing. By grace. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. My point is, that's how God operates. By the anointing. By the anointed one, we have all things yes. are ours. Whatever we have need of. Look at, look at this. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And I, I'm going to just show you some things. These are, this is a story we all heard. It's the, you know, the multiplying the bread and the loaves and the fishes and so forth. And we've read it thousands of times and heard it taught ever since we were in Sunday school, probably, if you went to Sunday school. But here's the scripture. It says, Give and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured again to you. So God, did, now think, just think, now he starts this whole thing, he uses nature all the time. Uh, in Luke, it talks about the, uh, the word is the seed, and this is how it works. You sow it like a farmer sows it. He, you know, he uses this agricultural kind of uh, analogy. And so he, he said, but here's the deal. God didn't create a corn cob with one kernel on it. I give corn to the squirrels, hoping they'll stay out of the bird feeders, but it doesn't work, but I still give it to them anyway. Corn on the cob. And so it's, you know, it's shell corn, and you just throw it out there, but it's, it's still on the cob. Well, you don't find a cob with one corn on, one kernel on it, right? It's filled with kernels. Yeah. It's, 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 they're covered with them. So many, you can't hardly count them. I mean, they're just... So he made corn cobs full of kernels. And all of creation is designed exactly the same way. Seed. More than enough. And that seed goes back in the ground and it, what does it do? One seed produces probably, you know, three or four ears of corn on a, on a stalk at least. And each one of those ears of corn have thousands of kernels on it. Yeah. 
right? So one seed produces, it's magnified, it's multiplied. Right. Amazingly. Yeah. That's how God works. That's what he's telling us. All things are yours. Yeah. There's no lack. I'll supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. According to my seed catalog. Praise the Lord. The way I do things. We're living in a time. Don has talked about this. Others have about the end times. I believe we're in the end times. They believe they were in the end times 2,000 years ago. And they were. Yeah. They were. They were beyond the law. They were into the time of grace, which is the last time. Yeah. Once we move past gr grace, we're into a millennial. Uh, amen. Where none of that stuff is, is, is operating. So we're living in the time where with 2,000 years of gospel seed planting that has gone on before us. I'm not saying it was all perfect, but I'm saying there's been seeds planted for over 2,000 years now based on what Jesus taught in the very beginning and based on what the Word of God says. Yes. And that's going to produce a hundredfold. Yes. Now think about that. Yes. It's the time the Scripture refers to as the plowmen and the reapers or, or the plowman and the reapers passing each other until you can't tell which one's planting and which one's reaping. Yeah. Amen. Look, just look at Amos chapter 9, verse 13. Oh. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Praise the Lord. Hey, I mean, have you guys noticed how this generation that we, that we live in seems to be uh, always in a hurry? I mean, you can, I, I catch myself doing it. I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have to be there. I'm not on a schedule. I don't have a time that I have to be someplace. You know what I'm saying most of the time? And I'm driving over the speed limit. And I'm getting in and out of traffic. And I'm, and I'm kind of talking to people who aren't moving fast enough, you know? For what? I'm not in, why, why am I such a hurry? Why are they in a hurry? Why is everybody in a hurry? I mean, everything we do, with all the technology we have, to do basically anything we want from anywhere, everything is faster than ever before, and yet we're always out of time. Sally's always saying that. Where did the week go? It's already Wednesday, you know, it's already, the, what happened? Yeah. There's 24 hours in every day, right? But it seems like everything's going 100 miles an hour all the time. Yeah. And it's because we're out of time. We're, out of, we're seeing it in the life around us. There's not enough time. We've got to hurry up. We've got to get this done. We've got to go. We've got to do. We gotta, why? Because we are out of time. Yeah. Yeah. We're at the end of time. Amos 9.13 explains the dilemma that we're faced with. It's a picture and a prophecy of this end time harvest that we are seeing, that we are approaching. But notice what's really happening in this verse. And again, the key is growing time. How much growing time do you think is involved when a farmer is out in the field walking a couple of feet behind the guy who's plowing and the guy behind him, a second or two behind him, planting grape seeds in the ground. And then just a few steps behind him is a guy who's pulling ripe grapes off the vine. Right? A mature vine. The growing time from seed to ripe fruit is seconds. Literally seconds. And so this verse is actually drawing our attention to the fact that the plowman or the planter, the reaper, the winemaker are catching each other and passing each other till you can't tell which one's which. Praise the Lord. It looks impossible. And in the natural, it is impossible. But look at John chapter 6, 5 through 13. And this is the story that I touched on briefly that I was going to speak to you about. And it's the the loaves and the fishes and multiplying and trying to feed all these thousands of people that, that were there that day. So when Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, 
for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered and said, 200 penny worth of bread isn't going to be sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There's a lad here which has five lo barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000, just the men. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered the get together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. So when Jesus sees this multitude, right, he asks Philip, he says, uh, where are we going to get bread? Where, how are we going to buy bread for all these people? And of course, Jesus knew, but he asked anyway. In the Amplified, it says he, he asked to test Philip. It says here to prove him, mm -hmm. to test him. He wanted to get Philip to think, and Philip's answer is why Jesus did what he did. Look, Jesus was and is aware of the fact that the way you and I learn is through communication. Right? It's through words. That is, we never, we never really know what we believe until we start hearing it out of our own mouth. Praise the Lord. See, until the pressure gets turned up to the point where words and thoughts start jumping out of our mouths, we really don't know what's deep down inside. These kind of things, these kind of situations, will tell you what you really believe. Because it's what comes out of our mouth under pressure. You can think, we got it all together. I, I know, praise the Lord, God's got it. And then something stupid happens, like yeah. has been happening, and we go, oh my God. What are we going to do now? Now what are we going to do? Now this has happened. Now what's going to take place? Now how? What? Because that's what is most in our insert, man. Yeah. What comes out of our mouth is what we're fill, filled yeah. with. It's what is dominant in us. So that's why we set a watch on our tongue because when crap happens like it has happened here, we need to make sure we're saying yes. what the Word of God says about things instead of what just pops out of my head because I'm anxious or I'm upset or I, I'm seeing all kinds of negative crap going on around me, right? right? Praise the Lord. When the pressure comes, that's when we know because the first thing that comes out of our mouth is, is, is happening as a result of the pressure that's on us. So we're either saying, God's got this thing. It's, it's going to be all right. That's why we need each other, too, to yeah. affirm those things and reaffirm those things. Right. See, all Philip could see was a problem. Right. All Philip could see was way too many people and very little to give them. Yeah. Amen? Look at Matthew 12 and verse 34. Praise the Lord. Matthew 12, 34. Old generation of vipers, how can you be evil... Speak good things, for out of the abundance of the heart, yeah. the mouth speaks. Yeah. So what Philip had in his heart and on his mind that day was little. He had little on his mind. Yeah. Amen. All he could see was the problem. There's so little to give him when there's so many people. How are we going to do this? Little was the dominant thing going through his head. How are we going to feed all these people? Yeah. John 6, 10-13. Jesus asked, not because he didn't know what he was going to do. He wanted to know what was strong in Philip. Yeah. Philip, been, has he really been listening to me? Has he really been paying attention to the words that I've been sharing with him? Has he seen what I, has he been hearing what I say about situations and circumstances? No. It's just a little, just a little bit. Here's all we got, Jesus. What are we going to do? And Jesus said, make the men sit down. There was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. Praise the Lord. 13. Therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments and the five barley loaves, and it remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Praise the Lord. 
So Matthew 14, 17, and 18, please. Matthew 14, 17, and 18. And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. Now why did Jesus ask them to bring them to him? Why did he ask them to give him the bread and the fish? Why not just have them hold them up and say, Blessed in Jesus' name. Or, Father, bless this food. Multiply it. I mean, why, why did he have to have it? He had it. The reason, because he wanted to handle the seed, was because of the anointing of increase. He had the anointing. They didn't have the anointing. The anointing of increase was on him. So he had to touch it. That's us today, folks. We have the anointing of increase. We have the anointing of God. The world's not going to get this thing straightened out. They'll, they'll have more giveaways. They'll have more, you know, here, for this and stimulus or whatever it might be. And I'm not against that. There's people that need it. But I'm just saying... If, if the world understood seed time and harvest, they wouldn't need a government handout. They wouldn't need government dole. They wouldn't need the government subsidies. God would take care of our needs. He is, the government is upon his shoulders. Praise the Lord. So today there's an anointing of increase that is literally and figuratively in our hands. We have it. Look at 2 Corinthians 9, 8 through 15. And God is able to make all grace, all anointing, abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, and may abound to every God work or everything God has spoken. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the want of the saints, but is abundant also by the many thanksgivings unto God. While by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Grace and anointing is what he's talking about here. And people are starving for it. They're hungering for it. And we have an abundance of it. We have more than enough to satisfy the needs of everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm saying we're living in a time... If we can believe the Word of God and not what we're seeing, not what we're looking at, supernatural harvest will come immediately. Yes. That's the day that we're in. We're out of time. Yes. Supernatural or a former and latter rain coming all at once. Yes. Amen. It's such a harvest that the reapers catch up with the sowers. Yes. Yes. The moment we sow, we reap. It's no longer confession, 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 and hope that someday it's going to come to pass. No, it's, we're getting to the place where when we say it, it will happen when we say it. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's the time. Because we're out of time. There's not time to drag it out anymore. God says now is the day of salvation. Today, if you can believe, all things will be possible. The moment we speak, it manifests. It's what's deepest in us that we end up saying. Yes. And if, it's been, if, it ha if we haven't seen it before, it's because we have been so inconsistent. Yes. Yes. We're, we're, if we're concentrating on this, we'll say what this says. But if we get caught in a pressure situation in a moment of time, it's like cussing the lawnmower. I don't swear all the time. Could have got an amen over here, but I mean, I don't, I don't cuss all the time. But you know, sometimes, 
I'm sorry, but when the pressure's on, something might come out of my mouth that I don't want anybody to hear. And yet, it comes out. Why? Because there's a lot of anger in there. There's a lot of stuff going on in here, right? That isn't coinciding with this. Because I've had time to just let it go sometimes. and I got to be me. <laughs> no, I don't want to be me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's what's deepest in us that we end up sowing. We end up saying and then reaping. I'm going to close with this. 1 John chapter 2, verse 24 to 27. Little children, these are the last days. He said, believe and you will see the manifestation of God. Hallelujah. This world needs to see Jesus before Jesus and us leave. Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us. Supernatural life. Eternal life. God life. If we abide in him. Yes. Keep the focus. We're the branch. He's the vine. But we got everything the vine's got. Amen? As long as we stay connected, as long as we stay connected to this, we have everything this thing promises. Everything it says, everything it shares with us is ours. It belongs to us. There is no lack. For our God supplies all our need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus, by the Anointed One and His anointing. Let's give God thanks for the anointing. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe there's going to be opportunities, as there always are, but I think the opportunities will be more frequent and more, you'll be more conscious of them. Because we're living in this end time where the anointing is so critically important. We can't exist without it. We can't have influence without it. All, we've, all we're left with without the anointing is the crap that we've been watching on television for the last six months. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm, I'm not just talking about the election. I'm talking about the chaos, the confusion, the anger, the frustration, the hatred, the, the unforgiveness, all the stuff that's going on out there. As people are desperate. Yes. Desperate for something other than human understanding. And we're the only ones that can give it to them. And when we do, when our job is finished, I'm out of here. Praise the Lord. But not till we're done. Yes, Jane. Uh, since you said that, I will tell you something that happened Thursday morning. We were watching TV and the news and all of this about the chaos and political unrest. And we were talking about it. And... Yes. And I'm not exactly sure, but I feel somehow God is really ready to move. Yes. 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 I told Sally. I, I, I was. I don't watch. I, I'm telling you. I, I'm not just saying this. I don't watch hardly any news. No. Sally will tell you. I don't watch. I don't. I don't even care to have it repeated to me. No. But with all the stuff that's happened here in the last week or so, with that, the you know the over you know, coming the guards and so forth there at the Capitol and all the kind of stuff that's been happening and so forth. I, I turned it to Fox News. Oh, my Lord. It was just this person saying this ugly thing, this person saying that ugly thing, and they're talking over each other and then to each other. And I, I got so angry. I mean, I could feel my heart racing in me. And it, it, it got so bad, I was screaming Literally raging at the television. Now Sally wasn't there. She had to, she'd gone to the store. So obviously it was it was worse than a Hawkeye game when they're losing. I mean I was out of my mind. I was beside myself, and I'm screaming and hollering as if these people could hear me. You moron! You idiot! Don't you understand what you're saying? You you ignorant! And on and on and on and on. And I just hit the button because I thought, hey, you're going to freak out here, man. You're, you're going to end up in an asylum or something the way you're carrying on. I mean, I was that mad. I, I was that 
outraged. I hit the mute, and immediately I heard the Lord say, where was that coming from? Seriously, I mean, it was almost like an audible voice. And I said, I, 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 I was talking to myself, I was just so upset, I'm just so angry. And he said, about what? I said, about what? You know, what they're saying, I can't listen to this. I, and he said, why are you? That's not the truth. And what you're feeling is not, does have nothing to do with me. Your hatred, your anger, your wanting to go out and punch somebody in the face for being such an idiot yeah. is not coming from me. No. It's coming from your flesh. It's coming yeah. from you allowing this stuff yeah. to build up in you until you become so filled with rage and hate. You're no better than the people that you're, con that you're talking about, that you're raging at. And I said, yes, Lord. I told Sally when she came home. I, I said, I, I've just, I had a literal experience with God here over my outrage at what's going on in this country. In every different way. But God said, that's not me. That's not my spirit. You're, you're not operating. You're, you're operating like they are. What do you expect? How do you expect anything to be any different if you're going to just scream and holler at them the way they're screaming and hollering at each other? Somebody's got to be looking to God and stop looking to everything else. Yes, Suzanne. So before worship, I kept hearing, you are salt. And I was thinking it was the Lord putting in my spirit. He's a salt. But I remember when I looked at that, I was like, well, we are the salt. Yeah. In Matthew 5, 13, it says, ye are the salt of the earth. Yes. But if the salt has lost his savor, savor, wherewith shall it be salted? If it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. And in Colossians 4, 6, it says, Let your speech be always with grace, anointing, yep. anointing one, seasoned with salt, yes. our choice of what comes out of our mouth, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Yes. So we go. are going to have opportunities for this conversation. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I just pray that our yes. conversations are seasoned with salt yes. and with grace. Amen. Yes. And let your light shine. Yes. You know, we're at that place where we, we, we can't hide it under a bushel no. anymore. We can't be one thing one way and something else somewhere else. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, look, I, I've never been one to just go on and on and on about you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you can't do this, you can't have that. You can't, I, I just don't, that, that's irrelevant. That doesn't have anything to do with what God's trying to get right. accomplished. That has all been settled in Christ. Now, we want to be better people, obviously. We want to do right things. But it's not based on that. It's based on what we're believing right. and what we're speaking. Okay. And thing, the thing that is so, uh, to the point that uh, Suzanne is making is, what you say to this person that's unsaved and what you say to this person that's unsaved may be totally different. They may, they may not have anything to do. So you can't just have a script. You can't just go, well, you know, here's the Roman road and let's just do this. No, that person... God has put them there for a reason, and there's, uh, there's something significant going on in them that they need addressed. Right. And God, through the anointing, will tell you what it is to say. Now, he may, it may not come as an audible voice. It may not come even as a, a strong utter, but it will just happen. Have, have we all done that where you've just said something? You go, wow, where did that come from? And that made a lot of sense, you know, all of, coming from me especially. I didn't, wouldn't have expected it, you know. I mean, but it's like after the fact, you realize, and then this person will come back to you later and say, you know, when you, we had that conversation, you said so-and-so, and you're thinking, I don't know. No, no big deal. You know, I didn't think it was a big deal. But to them it was. God knows what they need to hear. And through our just our being ourselves and trusting that God will speak to them, He'll do it. The anointing will bear fruit. It will, it will produce. Yes, it does. If we're abiding in Him, if we're focused on Him, that same energy, that same anointing that flows through Him flows through us. Yes. And through us to produce fruit. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. God bless all of you. Have a great week. Trust in that anointing and watch what God does in your life. Praise the Lord. You're, you're dismissed in Jesus' name.